I have a subject actually that I want sure. to bring to the table. Good. So maybe Martina, you have more experience, right, than us in that. But I want to understand how an industrial Internet of Things platform is different from a smart monitoring solution like SCADA or or any other like this. I mean, what is the difference? I mean, because let's let's take a step back, right? Like if I'm a process engineer, if I'm somebody that's looking at machines and looking at monitors of what's happening in the machines, Ascada does the job pretty well, right? It's kind of all that, yeah, we agree on that. But I mean, it still gives me the information I need. I mean, vibration, F, the energy consumption, or it's a, it's a it's a way of real in real time looking at what's happening in your in your facilities, right? Now, now how does this compare to a when you want to introduce a digital platform, an IoT platform? Like, how is it different? How does it differ? Like, that would be something that I would be curious to know what you guys think about. Yeah, well, first of all, maybe it's interesting to say that we are not actually competing. Uh, we're not in competition. We don't actually want to replace these tools. Um, we are actually just uh, an IoT platform actually just offers something more. Uh, actually, an I IoT platform actually offers something more um, on top of what, as you mentioned, SCADA, for example, offers. And um, yeah, the one of the main functionalities or one of the main value that this can the IIoT platform can bring is actually uh, being able not only to to check your data in real time and get insights which is already quite valuable for um, for some uh, some plans some act or some clients uh, but on the other side also being able to actually transform this data you know to deeply use this data to create something new like for example re-engineer your features so re-engineering the features means that you do not only have your sensors data but you are actually also able to produce new data uh, like for example delta uh, ratios so actually you compute and you transform your data to do new calculation to trigger or to and hide um, information that otherwise you won't have. And secondly, also the opportunity or the possibility to be able to integrate artificial intelligence. Um, it's something that will bring value uh, to the system, to the process optimization or process um, control. So for example, being able to um, integrate a, a quick anomaly detection system, um, like an algorithm for anomaly detection system, or something a little bit more advanced, like for example, automating a furnace, automating a kiln. These are all things that you need quite a solid platform um, that supports these kind of functionalities. Okay, so if, so let's say that SCADA is, or similar tools like SCADA are the first step into understanding or monitoring what's happening in your in your facilities and your process. And then if you want to go a step further, if you want to really dive into, okay, what is that data telling me? How can I use the historic of the data to understand what's going to happen in the future, to try to predict when failures are going to happen, predict with uh, by, by studying that what type of anomalies happen and when these happens, why do they happen? You know, like root cause analysis based on those anomalies and then try to create predictive models. So going that step further, going that step into into AI and really using that that data that, that your process and your machines are already recollecting, right? Using that to actually create a more efficient process than just actually visualize. You know, so if I understand correctly, that's in a nutshell what, what yeah. I, IoT platforms can really bring to the table. I know, Philip, if you want to add something on that. Yeah, I mean, if I had to, the way I would articulate it is that uh, solutions like SCADA offer something very valuable, which is visualizing the data coming from your production and your assets. Uh, but where really IoT and IoT platforms excel is getting more business value out of the data that you're getting and visualizing through SCADA. So they kind of layer on top and add additional value to that um and offer 
interesting and pretty cool features like predictive analytics. You mentioned predictive maintenance, but I, I prefer the term predictive analytics in because you can use uh, some of the machine uh, learning models uh, and AI capabilities to predict things not only relating to the uh, asset health, but also performance and, and things that are going to affect in, in the end the quality of your output. I like that term, predictive analytics. That's really using the data. Okay. Correct. And the idea is to create, I suppose, self-optimizing, um, how should I put it, a self-optimizing solution which learns from it as, as, as the process goes along and the more data there is. Can then look for backwards, reiterate, and uh, learn from, from, from past anomalies and mistakes that happen during the, the production. Yeah, so this is when continuous improvement comes in, right? Because it's a model that's continuously improving based on your knowledge, based on your know-how, and based on your day-to-day -day activity inside of the process. So th that's also like something valuable that the platform brings from my perspective is you have all of these operators, engineers, uh, people on the floor that have been working in the same facility for years and they know so much about the process about what's happening and you know these these people are going to eventually move on into new jobs or move into or retire or whatever it is and you have a lot of knowledge that is going to be lost there and you normally have to transfer that knowledge to another engineer but transferring that knowledge is complicated because it, it comes with experience like when specific problems happen that they have to had to react and that's something that AI models can integrate, right? To help, to help facilities understand these, um, to understand when these problems arise, arise, what to do, how to react, and what to do, and how to prevent them, basically. You know, so that's kind of also an added value of the knowledge transfer that you can give, that you can pass on through your teams and digitalizing that knowledge, let's say. Yeah, and I would, oh, sorry, I would just yeah. add uh, that basically these kind of tools, uh, the this kind of platform, IIoT, enhance data-driven decision making. In comparison, maybe to a just a smart monitoring tool, where you can visualize your data in a, um, in in a dashboard or uh, in in real time. Correct. Well, well put. I think yeah, the data-driven decision making where obviously culture plays an important role because no 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 amount of data uh, good as it is or or intelligence uh, uh, or algorithms uh, are going to help you if you're not putting them into practice uh, if you're not relying and trusting your technology to give you the, the information and acting upon it of course uh, but I wanted to take a step back what what Ricky has mentioned in fact um, about the experience of some of the people on the ground and end users of these types of uh, platforms. So, so far we've talked about pretty, pretty complex and uh, systems and like kind of end solution, like end goals of what uh, digitalization uh, is trying to achieve. But if we kind of step, take a step back and look at a little bit of uh, small and medium enterprises, I'm not talking about super small and micro, like some, someone posted a uh, comment in one of my posts, a guy with a CNC machine and his dog, no, a guy with a CNC machine in his garage and his dog. Um, but I'm talking about a little bit larger, maybe medium companies with the machine floor of uh, a, not an insignificant amount of assets, uh, all of which raging in the pricing between, I don't know, 30,000, 100,000 euros, maybe more. They themselves uh, can likewise very much uh, benefit from an IoT platform that connects all their assets and you know um, uh, creates a, a digital twin, uh, digital replica of the machine floor, where they can not only um, monitor the data coming from the production, something that's kind of not uh, very, I should, uh, how should I say, present or 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 prevalent in such industries because they don't have SCADA or the, uh, or the uh, uh, finance and budgets that the big companies have. So first of all, they get to see all of their assets performing. 
uh, in a digital uh, form, in a digital replica. And second of all, they can have something like an anomaly detection system. Obviously, maintenance issues and failures are not that big of a deal for uh, such manufacturers uh, of, uh, uh, of discrete manufacturers or discontinued con uh, line manufacturing, but, um, but it certainly plays some role in having a solution uh, can really cut down on the cost and downtime that they're having, uh, especially once those solutions are made more accessible, more affordable, and more democratized. Well, I, I see we're coming up to our time. Thank you, everybody, for joining and uh, for giving us your comments. I think uh, next week we can dive into how do we get that data. That would be interesting for our listeners to understand. How do you go from your machine and, and gathering that data and connecting it to an IoT platform? Uh, and yeah, I mean, cheers to Espresso 4.0. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Ciao.